What do you have? It is quite common to hear people say, I'm so empty or I've nothing. But how true is this statement of having absolutely nothing when we compared it to what God says in scriptures? Genesis 1, 28 KJV states, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Yes, it may be true that the person has no money in their account at that point, but according to God, no one is truly empty, because God's blessing, gifts, potentials, and grace is upon us. No man is essentially full of treasures, because he has the Creator's blessing on him. His blessings represent ability and capacity to get things done. It also represents knowledge or ideas that bring favor. God pronounced man blessed and gave him the assignment to be fruitful. This means the ability to be productive is already deposited in us. And then God said multiply. If he declared the ability to multiply in us, then it's inbuilt, right? Then another command was for man to replenish the earth, groom the earth, make it flourish, and make it beautiful. Finally, he said have dominion. This means we shouldn't allow limitations dominate us because we have the capacity to creatively look out for solutions even when we look like we have nothing. 2 Kings 4, 1 Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the Creator is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Of course, that's a basic human response. I have nothing. Absolutely nothing in my house. But then came the blessings of God through the prophet Elijah on what seemed non-existent, and then surplus came on the scene. 2 Kings 4, 3 then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. We must know that we already carry God's blessings, and we cannot be stranded if we lean on his wisdom. With God, there is always a way out of any situation but we must have the right mindset of possibility to see the way out. So what do we have in our hand that God gave us as channels for his blessings? Number one, talents. Everyone has specific talents that come naturally. When we put these talents to use, we multiply provisions. Jesus described this with the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, 14. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth, and hid the Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. 
His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawn. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed, and not gather where I have strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The way Jesus sees us as profitable stewards is when we make full use of our talents. He gave it to us as currency to trade with, so that there will be proofs of productivity and abundance all around us. Number 2. Through Work What we refer to as work in an avenue or a means for God's blessings to come to us. God designed work as a channel to provide for us. The world is gradually turning into place where people see work as an inconvenience. So many want the best that life has to offer without doing anything. However, life is not designed to function that way. God designed us to be productively engaged. Galatians 6, 7, KJV says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We deceive ourselves if we hate work, because eventually we will see that it is the one thing that brings dignity and worth to our lives, no matter how uncomfortable it is at first. Man's opinion cannot change God's word. Man's intelligence cannot alter the validity of his principle. Matthew 24, 35, AMP says, Heaven and earth, as now known, will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Genesis 2 tells us one of the reasons why man was created. It says, No shrub or plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprouted, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to cultivate the ground. And the Lord God planted a garden, oasis in the east, in Eden, delight, land of happiness. And he put the man whom he had formed created there. And in that garden the Lord God caused to grow from the ground every tree that is desirable and pleasing to the sight, and good, suitable, pleasant for food. So the Lord God took the man he had made, and settled him into the garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. No tree was planted, no grass grew until God created man to cultivate the ground and maintain the garden. One of the main reasons why man was created was work and productivity. So hating work and depending on others is definitely going against one of our purposes of being created. Now let's look at what our attitude to the things God has placed in our hands. Number 1. Never feel too big to work or use the talents you have. Never look down on your talents or the opportunities that are before you. Zechariah 4. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel, with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. It is important that we start from where we are. Yes, it is great to have big plans of where we are going, but we must start small for the beginning season. Ecclesiastes 3, 1, AMP says, There is a season, a time appointed for everything, and a time for every delight, an event, or purpose under heaven. Number 2. Quit looking at what you don't have and focus on what you have, because everyone has something in their hands. Don't curse what you have. Ask God what you need to do with what you have. The world is filled with people who thought they had nothing, but when they recognized their talents and worked on it, they emerged as positive influencers and role models to millions. If you think nothing can come out of it from you, then you have placed a limit on God in the talents He has given to you. Nothing limits God like our mindset and outlook to life. Our talents, gifts, and abilities are meant to give us what we need on earth. We must take the limits off our minds, and this will in turn take the limits off God to transform our lives. 
We can think of our mindset as the ground in the biblical parable in the sower in Matthew 13, 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and wherewith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, and they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. A wrong mindset is like the stone that produces nothing, while the right mindset is like good ground. So as we think right and work at the gifts he has given us our lives, we will be overflowing with fruits to show. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for every single blessing you have poured upon my life. Thank you for every gift, talent, and skill I have to be blessed with. And thank you for pronouncing on me fruitfulness, multiplication, and dominion. Lord Jesus, I ask that you constantly open my eyes to see all of the valuable things that you have put in my hands. And as I see them, please help me to value them accordingly as I go ahead to groom them till they give light and hope to others. Jesus, I also ask that your nature and attitude be renewed in me so that I can live with appreciation for all your blessings in me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mari ikut Yesus. Mari ke jalan yang benar. Tuhan berkati.